The, the basic premise of this bill is that all cancer deaths are wasted lives. I don't mean that in the sentimental sense that if only my mother, sister, brother or daughter had gone on to fulfill their... I don't mean that at all. I mean it in the strictly mathematical sense that science does not advance by one centimetre as a result of all these deaths. Why is that? It's because the deceased receive only the standard procedure, the endless repetition of a failed experiment. Why is that? Because under current law, any deviation by a doctor from standard procedure, if anything goes wrong, is likely to lead to a verdict of guilt for medical negligence. Why is that? Because current law defines medical negligence as deviation from standard procedure. But as innovation is deviation, so non-deviation is non-innovation. Under the current law, just to be clear, the doctor is obliged to stick to the well-worn path, even though he or she knows it leads only to poor life quality followed by death. This is how current law inhibits medical progress. The preeminence of standard procedure is a flat contradiction of the logic of scientific discovery and the whole majestic scientific process comes to what we might call a dead halt at the bedside of the cancer victim. That's why the Prime Minister and the Secretary of State have supported this bill and are taking it forward. That's why so many doctors and professors, many of whom are around me here today, but who have worked on the drafting of this bill over the last year, put to me, they put this case very bluntly. I'm quoting here the Regis Professor of Medicine at Oxford, who says, there will be no cure for cancer until real doctors with real patients in real hospitals can attempt some kind of innovation. So what is the, what is the solution that this bill will take forward? Um, it, it's, the bill says this, we want there to be more freedom for doctors to innovate. On the other hand, we don't want doctors to be able to do whatever they want. We don't want patients to be treated like mice. We don't want reckless experimentation which puts patients' lives at risk. But we do want bold, scientific, responsible innovation. This bill achieves both ends. It clarifies and codifies for doctors, the courts, insurers, what is best practice in innovation. It removes the uncertainty and the ambiguity which now surrounds um, a trial after a, an uh, unfortunate event. And it provides what one of the um, leading justices in the land describes as, I'm quoting him, a clear path to lawful innovation. So what the judges are saying is that there needs to be a better balance between defensive medicine, which rightly doesn't want to put the patient's life at risk, and also doesn't want to put the doctor's reputation at risk. A better balance between defensive medicine and innovation. Under the current law, that's impossible to achieve. The balance is too much too far towards the status quo. That's why this bill strikes a better balance. But you understand, Dr. Pemberton, why it has to be a balance. Exactly. You can't just shift from the complete status quo to complete freedom. Yes. That's taken 18 months of drafting by um, so, some, of the, some of the most brilliant judges and most brilliant doctors in the country.